And our next presenter is Eric Yokel with the Scott River Watershed Council. The title of his presentation, Water Quality Monitoring in the Scott River Tailings for Restoration Planning. Take it over, Eric. Great, um, thank you very much, Crystal. Mm -hmm. And... I kind of have fun in this role. <laughs> okay, does that show the um, presentation or the presentation view? Uh, that is the presentation. That looks good, Eric. See, sorry, can, is that the presentation? Yeah, sorry. looks great, Eric. I'm, I'm sorry. Okay. Um, yes, yeah, so I'm Eric Yobel with the Scott River Watershed Council, and I'm going to um, cover some topics regarding um, using monitoring to kind of advise and direct restoration planning. And as um, Randy kind of talked about in the beginning, uh, this is really um, playing into that you know, adaptive management and using um, some of the monitoring to adaptively manage some of our projects. Um, this is a collaborative effort with um, Jay Stallman of Stillwater Sciences and Ann Willis and Sophie Munger of the UC Davis Center for Watershed Science. So at first, obviously I have to acknowledge our um, gracious funding. Um, we received a lot of the funding that I'm going to cover currently from the FRGP program, from California Department of Fish and Wildlife. And then a significant additional funding has come from both the um, Co-Enhancement Fund and the BOR funding in the Klamath um, Coastal Conservancy and the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service. And one of our major collaborators is um, NOAA Marine Fisheries and the California Water Board. And working in the Scott River, um, we work exclusively in a uh, private landscape. So without the support access of the um, Scott Valley landowners, we would be unable to um, do any of this work. So as always, we have to thank both our funders, but as importantly, the landowners within the Scott Valley that are working with us and the other entities trying to restore um, the fisheries and the water quality. So I'm gonna um, present on a series of projects that we have implemented in the um, tailing reach of the Scott River. And this area was dredged um, by a Yuba dredge from the mid thirties to the mid fifties. It, as you can see, um, left a relatively devastated, completely altered landscape where we have these large tailing piles on the surface and the Scott River flows through this tailing piles. The tailings start um, downstream of the confluence of the East Fork and the South Fork of the Scott and extend for approximately five river miles. There's about 30% of the watershed that is upstream of these tailings. And um, both of those tributaries, the East Fork and the Scott Fork, have documented um, coho salmon utilization. So it's an important um, area in the watershed and we really want to try to improve the habitat both within these tailings as much as possible, but also improve um, the fish passage and the connectivity. And that's one of the you know, major legacy impacts, unfortunately, of these tailings is, you know, we completely altered the um, structure of the stratigraphy of the ground, both, you know, the surface and the subsurface. This, um, the act of mining, and the coarse material on the surface has um, increased significantly the hydraulic conductivity, and this is a point that we'll touch upon. And one of the, the major um, results of this that we see is, is a loss of surface flow during pretty much every base flow period, be it a wet year or a dry year. But there's other um, you know, significant impact, obviously, of the tailings, you know, loss of floodplain, altered um, stream morphology, you know, significantly reduce repairing forest. So the Watershed Council started working within the tailings in 2014 when we installed the Sugar Creek Beaver Dam analogs. And um, we had a relatively robust but small scale monitoring effort focused around the fisheries and the water quality physical parameters of the reach that was affected by these BDAs on Lower Sugar Creek that was within this tailing reach. Uh, we had um, several water surface elevation stations, temperature stations, 
and then we did some fish sampling. Since 2014, we've expanded the scope of the work within the tailings. And um, one of the things that we did, as you can see on the lower image, is we graded within Sugar Creek a floodplain next to Sugar Creek with the hope that that would, in conjunction with the BDAs, create even more habitat and restore some of those characteristics like floodplains that we lost in this tailing region. We'll get back to that floodplain. So um, since um, we started working with the BDAs in Sugar Creek in 2014, we in installed several other projects in the tailings. In 2020, we put in a, um, another alcove downstream of Sugar Creek and some in-stream structures. And then we embarked from fish, uh, FRGP funding on a planning project with one of the major landowners within the tailings to try to find some you know, restoration approaches and solutions. And then that landowner is kind of here in the middle of the tailings. And you know, our objectives as are both kind of restoring critical habitat for indigenous fish and specifically in the Scott coho salmon. And then also um, restoring processes, you know, or trying to restore as much as possible processes within this you know, significantly impaired reach of the tailings. And you know, there's a lot of uncertainties, and that is you know going into where the monitoring plays in this kind of planning process. You know, one of the main uncertainties, honestly, is what is the stratigraphy um, underneath these tailings, and what are the surface and groundwater interactions? within this reach of the Scott River that is affected by the tailings. And then um, temperature dynamics are another um, component that we're very interested in because, you know, as most know, the Scott River is temperature listed um, and the tailings actually, this loss of surface water percolating into the tailings and then coming back into the Scott River below the tailings does have some beneficial effects in temperatures like cooling the water. And so here's um and just kind of what our vision that and these are slides that um, Jay put together with Stillwater for you know trying to develop some tools to get a better understanding of the existing conditions of the tailings in order to help advise our understanding and direct restoration that can hopefully be effective. So this is kind of the basic thesis of the monitoring is we have a, what I feel is a, a two-prong approach. Using remote sensing products that are existent and you know, those are primarily historical images. We have two years of um, LIDAR from 2010 and 2018. And then uh, they, the Department of Water resources just um, flew an airborne electromagnetic survey in um, 2021 that we're hoping to get a better understanding of that stratigraphy. And then we're using drones to um, get localized photogrammetry and LIDAR acquisition. And then on top of the, or in conjunction with the remote sensing products, we have this empirical data collection that I'm gonna talk about in a little more detail. Um, We've been collecting surface water and groundwater water surface elevation going back to 2014 when we installed those BDAs in sugar. Um, again, surface water and groundwater temperature, stream discharge, some dissolved oxygen, and um, landscape topography. So trying to you know, collect a suite of um, data that shows both what happened or we try to understand what happened using the historic aerial imagery where we went from in the earliest photos, 1944, you can see some of this area is not yet mined to 2020 to try to get an understanding of how this landscape was changed. And here's one kind of product that we generated from um, both actually mining logs and the um, orthophotograph is seeing the alignment of these tailings and realizing that there's areas where the alignment go along parallel to the valley floor. And there's also areas where the alignments of the tailings are perpendicular to the valley floor. And how this method that they use in mining fundamentally 
affected the underground stratigraphy and you know led us you know, hopefully to try to understand better what's underlying and how that affects the groundwater and surface water interactions. So one of the main data points that we've been collecting is water surface elevation using either stilling wells and surface water or shallow groundwater wells for areas of groundwater. Um, we use continuous loggers. It gives us both um, with the survey, the water surface elevation to the NAVD 88 datum and water temperature. So here's just a figure showing the water surface elevation behind the Sugar Creek BDA pond that we installed in 2014 and really showing the effects of those significant droughts that we've been unfortunately experiencing really over the last decade. This is 2018, 2020, 2021 during, you know, so during those, you know, baseful periods of um, the drought years, we're seeing a significant decrease in water surface elevation in, you know, this restoration area compared to these wetter years where we're not getting that. And then we started putting in loggers around the Sugar Creek site in 2014. But as you can see, over the years, we've expanded significantly our area of water surface elevation. And that's allowed us to get a better characterization of the tailings reach as a whole to try to embark on understanding these groundwater, surface water interactions and the hydraulic conductivity and the hydraulic gradients within the tailings. And here's just a transect that I developed um, showing the base flow and a high flow surface water elevations from upslope or upstream of Sugar Creek. Sugar Creek's right here at this point and then down. And what we found extremely interesting is this relatively um, significant drop of water cell surface elevation down stream or down slope of um, Sugar Creek, which really is kind of appears to be serving as a hinge point that's holding the water surface elevation up here. But we now want to really know what the hydraulic control is for that water surface elevation downstream. And I mentioned earlier this um, adaptive management and um, that we graded a floodplain in 2020, which you can see right here in um, Sugar Creek into the tailings adjacent to Sugar Creek. And um, unfortunately, after we graded that floodplain, we saw a significant amount of wa loss of wa surface water during the winter, the subsequent winter. It literally percolated into this graded surface. And um, we, through adaptive management, managed to um, treat that um, permeability through injecting sand actually into the surface. And um, even after we did that, I'm showing here is a figure that shows the blue is the water surface elevation in Sugar Creek, and the black is the water surface elevation in this corner of the floodplain. And it was remarkable to us that it was literally almost six feet deeper, um, the water was six feet lower elevation in the floodplain than in Sugar Creek. And that was the reason why when we graded it and didn't seal the surface, we had that extreme percolation. And here's just a, an image of um, that sand seal and the floodplain actually functioning and holding water. So we continued looking at these water surface elevations, looking um, using the continuous monitoring. And here's a location downstream of Sugar Creek. And you can see, again, we're seeing that the black is the Scott River and the blue is an adjacent one of these ponds within the tailings. And again, the Scott River is um, perched um, significantly higher, up to seven feet higher than the adjacent ponds in the tailings. So we kind of have a hydraulic conductivity that's going away from the Scott River into the tailings. Here's an example of um, using the remote sensing. I, the 2018 LiDAR was actually flown in March where there was significant water in the Scott. So I used GIS to fundamentally um, select points of open water and then made a hydraulic um, gradient map, which is shown there. 
And then finally, um, we're collecting discharge data, trying to get continuous discharge throughout um, specific sites in the tailings to get a, a, a localized water balance and use that in conjunction with the water surface elevation and um, to try to understand these groundwater surface water understandings. And this is the work that um, UC Davis, um, Ann Willis and Sophie Munger, the Center for Watershed Sciences are embarking on. Fundamentally, we're, um, UC Davis has developed a hydraulic hydro model model of the Scott River as a whole. Um, Dr. Thomas Harder's group has started this, you know, more than 15 years ago. And um, it's a mod flow based model. It's called the Scott Valley Integrated Hydrologic Model. And our goal is to downscale the tailings reach of that model and try to um, get a higher resolution and also get a better understanding of the stratigraphy and the existing hydraulic conductivity so we can use this existing model at a smaller scale to better understand the <clears throat> what's going on in the tailings fundamentally and then use that to assess the um, potential impact of different proposed alternatives. So that's a lot I understand real quick, but um, that's my final, and I don't know if there's any questions. And should I stop scare, sharing the screen? Um, I think it's okay to leave it there, Eric. Okay. Thank you. Well, this is a huge undertaking. So thank you guys so much for everything you're doing and working in that area. Um, there aren't any questions, but I will just uh, add in, Eric, that we're also doing a higher resolution off the UC Davis model in the Quartz Valley subbasin. Um, so I thought that was interesting. You guys are doing something similar. Any other questions before we let Eric go and we head to a break? Doesn't okay, well, thanks. Thank you guys for all your time and I appreciate it.